Hi, and welcome to uh, KVEC's uh, New and Emerging Teacher Cadre. This is our Behavior Cadre, and today we're going to be discussing a little bit about Tier 2 Behavior Strategies. My name is Doug Smith, and I am a Behavior Consultant at the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative. Thank you for being with us. So some topics of discussion today that we're going to try to cover or briefly and uh, hit on will be the PBIS tiers of intervention. Then we're going to be looking at what tier two is and a brief discussion of uh, tier two and what that may look like in your school. And then we're going to be looking at uh, talking about a behavior contracts, school home notes, class pass and check in and check out. And these are all tier two behavior strategies to implement in, in your schools. So when we're looking at PBIS tiers of intervention, tiers of intervention work with uh, behavior as well as academics. So with tier one, tier one in a, a school that is implementing PBIS, uh, they include pre uh, preventative measures instead of reactive measures. There are things that you put into place in your school setting for all students. And most students, 85% of the students in your school will be able to uh, be successful with just tier one strategies. And some of those tier one practices include uh, school-wide positive expectations and behaviors that are taught and retaught to all students. Also, you're looking at established classroom expectations that are aligned with school-wide expectations. And you are looking at a continuum of procedures for encouraging expected behavior, as well as a uh, continuum of procedures for discouraging problem behaviors. And then, of course, there's uh, procedures for encouraging uh, school and family partnership. So tier one is for all students. That's what we put into place as soon as the students walk into the school or into the building. Tier two strategies are those things that are used for, we call it targeted group interventions. And 10 to 15 percent of your population will need tier two strategies. And uh, again, tier two strategies are targeted, they're group-based, small groups. Uh, so there's some examples that we will talk about a little bit. And one of the examples that, one thing that we could talk about as far as a tier two strategy is small group uh, social skills instruction. Uh, so a lot of times with our students that need those tier two supports, they are lacking social skills. And those social skills, like any skill, has to be taught and taught explicitly to the students. Uh, so those are things, like I said, that those are the strategies that we're putting into place for those kiddos that are struggling with tier one uh, uh, interventions. Now, tier two interventions are layered on top of tier one. It's not, we've tried these tier one strategies, they're not working, so let's quit doing that and let's throw these small group strategies out there for this, uh, uh, few students, 10 to 15% of the students, and not worry about tier one. You layer it on top of tier one strategies. Continue teaching and reteaching your rules and expectations. Continue uh, to encourage appropriate behaviors. Continue to discourage inappropriate behaviors and uh, have a way that you can uh, reward students for those uh, successes that they're showing. Again, like I said, the small group, 10 to 15% of the students will be uh, tier two strategies. Again, small group, uh, explicitly taught instructional skills. Tier three strategies are those things that five to 10% of the kids in your school will need. Uh, those strategies include uh, completing an, uh, an FBA functional behavior assessment and then uh, developing a behavior intervention plan. And then also looks at some uh, wraparound services from mental health providers that are within your community. So like I said, today we're going to be looking at and focusing on uh, tier two strategies. Uh, tier two, again, are focused and intensive. They're small group interventions. So tier two practices include increased instruction and practice with self-regulation and social skills, increased adult supervision, increased opportunities for positive reinforcement, increased pre-corrections, 
and then increased focus on possible function of problem behaviors and increased access to academic supports as well as behavioral supports. Some examples that we're going to be looking at today are behavior contract. We're going to be talking about what a behavior contract is. Maybe look at who a behavior contract would be good for and how to maybe develop a behavior contract. We'll look at a school home note. School home note is a way to communicate with the home, how the student's doing in, in class and at school, a class pass, and we'll be looking at check-in and check-out. A behavior contract is a process of negotiating an agreement uh, between staff and the student so that all receive a benefit or payoff from uh, the contract that you're using. Some of the... Uh, so that's a negotiated, it focuses on positive behaviors, it looks at positive reinforcement, and it looks at pre-correction and prompting. So behavior contract is uh, effective for students who can perform a certain behavior or skill, but they choose not to. It's a won't do problem instead of a can't do problem. So some active ingredients of a behavior contract include a negotiated agreement, well, it's brokered to deal to increase student buy-in, focuses on positive behaviors uh, teachers want to see in the classroom, those behaviors that are incompatible with the problem behaviors. Those are the ones that we want to focus on. What are those positive behaviors? What are those things that they can do positively to repl replace those inappropriate behaviors or negative behaviors? It also looks at positive reinforcement for uh, meeting a goal and the teacher follows up with daily pre-correction and prompting. So an example of the, the pre-correction or prompting is when uh, you have a student that may be starting to show those inappropriate actions or behaviors, you pull out or you remind them, remember our contract, and you can pull that contract out again where they, this is what the student's going to do. This is what I, the teacher, is going to do. This is the reward for following the uh, the for doing what was negotiated in the contract. These are the consequences. And these are, uh, you can pull that contract out and say, look, it was signed by both of us. We agreed this is what we were going to do to make your day a, a better day or easier day, uh, a more productive day at school. So now school home note is a great way to encourage communication uh, with the school and uh, with the parents. So you could have, you know, for, for younger kids, uh, you could have uh, the smiley face, the neutral face, and a frowny face. And then you could have three to five rules or goals or things that they're working on throughout the day and see how they are. Uh, you provide them with that uh, feedback on their day and how they behaved or how, how if they met their goal. And if they met their goal that day, when they take the note home, the parents read over the note, look at it, discuss it with the student. And if they made their goal that day, then they provide them with a reward or they celebrate those with that student. If they had a rough day and didn't quite make their goal or make the points that they needed to be rewarded, then the parent will encourage them to do better tomorrow. And so with the celebration, it could be things like extra uh, computer time, maybe sit up a few minutes later, maybe a, 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 a less uh, less chores to do at home, maybe not having to do as much homework. Whatever is rewarding uh, for that student helps them celebrate that uh, positive day. Uh, when it, If it is something that they did not receive their reward or didn't meet their goal, then you have to uh, encourage those students. But some of the things that the parents could do, maybe have them extra chores at home that they would have to complete as a result of not meeting their goal. Uh, maybe an earlier bedtime. Uh, maybe they have to, you know, complete so so much of extra uh, uh, academic activities before they go to bed. Just whatever it is that the student uh, finds not as preferred or not as fun as if they had made, met their goal and reached that uh, reward and that celebration. Some of the uh, uh, active ingredients of a school home note include development of the home note that captures student behavior and communicates that with the parents. Uh, student behavior section, you have a teacher communication section. 
and uh, you communicate that with the parents. Now, when using a school home note, sometimes there's a little bit of training involved in talking to the parents and letting them know, you know, what a school home note is. These are the goals that we're working on. These are some things that you may think about ways to reward your uh, child for having a wonderful day at school. And these are some ways that you could maybe encourage them to do better uh, tomorrow. So it's just a way to communicate and it's a way to help the parents understand what the school is doing. And it also helps the school to know what are some things that are going on in the student's life that they need to be aware of. Could be a, uh, may have been, uh, had an illness or a sickness over the weekend. Maybe, uh, you know, a, a grandparent uh, uh, not feeling well. Maybe I've, I've got a trip planned and they're going to be out for the next couple of days. Whatever it is that they need to communicate back and forth with the with the school and the teacher. Uh, so another thing is that it requires parent signature. Uh, so you send a school home note home, of course, and then the parents read over it, provide with the, the reward or encouraged to do better. They sign the school home note if they have any questions or anything, they can put that on the note, and then it returns back to school with the student the next day with the parent signature. That way it kind of holds the, the student accountable to make sure that the note gets home and it is looked at and it is discussed and that is their signature is a way of saying that, okay, this is what we did as a result of him bringing home or she bringing home a, a note. Another uh, tier two strategy that you could possibly think about using is a, a class pass. And a class passes are, are those strategies, are those things that are, are used for students who exhibit escape, uh, motivated, disruptive classroom behavior to avoid doing academic work. So students are given class passes. They're taught how to appropriately use those passes uh, to request a break. And then they can choose to hold, or they can choose to hold on to their passes and cash them in at the end of the week for a larger reward. So for example, if we give a, you, you have to develop the class pass, what it looks like uh, with a student, and then you may give them, all right, you've got, starting out, you may have to give them a, a larger number of passes than you do after they start uh, using the intervention successfully. So at the start, you may issue six passes, six opportunities for the students to take a break from your classroom, go somewhere else, agreed upon an agreed upon place, that the student can go to for two to three minutes. And then after they hmm, decompressed, became uh, more regulated, uh, and then they could return back to the class. So, and then on the class pass, it would tell you the student's name, of course, it would tell how many minutes the pass was good for, and it could tell you where are the student's going, where will they spend their couple minutes out of your classroom, and then also uh, what they can do during that time. And then again, like I said, they can use these all day, but encourage the students to save up those passes. So that way, at the end of the week or end of the month, whatever you want to do, I would do first starting out using this intervention and all these interventions. I would do a, a short amount of time before, you know, for example, a class pass, I would give them like eight maybe for the day. And then as they become more, uh, uh, suitable or more successful using that intervention, I will cut those number of passes down to maybe six and then down to four. And that way you're you're shortening the amount of time they're out of the classroom and increasing in-class academic time. Uh, so those uh, talks about a class pass. Some uh, ingredients or active parts of a class pass is develop the pass, like I said, uh, determine the number of passes and the length of time that the student can have a break. And teach them how to use that. Teach them how to request a break and explain to them, you know, what it means to take a break, where they can go, and the logistics of everything. Also, identify items or privileges or activities that the student can do while they're using their break or their class pass. Check in and check out is a system that uses a mentor as the guiding force behind uh, this intervention. And it also works great for those students who are, uh, who need that uh, adult attention or that little added extra support 
throughout the day just to kind of keep them motivated. So uh, the Simon of the Mentor provides unconditional positive regard and feedback on a daily basis. And so that mentor could be uh, a, a, it could be a classroom teacher. It could be a, a custodian. It could be a bus driver. It could be uh, a certified or classified staff, just so it's someone that has a positive relationship with that child and that that child gets along with and they can talk with each other. So some of the things that as far as checking and check out the students, uh, of course, you'll do a little bit of check in and check out uh, uh, training to, you know, learn how to use the 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 intervention and the strategy, how to implement it and how to get buy in from the students. Uh, so check in and check out starts with the student when the student arrives to school, either as soon as they get to school or soon after, you know, very early in the morning. Uh, one of the first things that they would do is go to their mentor or the person that they're checking in with. They would get a daily progress report or a school card, something that has their goals that they are working on for that day. And it could be three to five goals that they're working on. So they get these on a, a card, uh, like I said, daily progress report, and they take that card with them. So the mentors say, hey, good morning, glad to see you. You know, happy you're here. I'm so excited to see what kind of wonderful day you're going to have. Build them up. Build that, use that behavior momentum. Get them started off on the right foot. And uh, then if you get them started off on the right foot, maybe they'll continue on that way throughout the day. So then they'll give them their, their uh, progress report or their point card, and they'll take it to each teacher. And so as they go to the class, the teacher rates them zero, one, or two. Uh, with, you know, so you can look at it, uh, zero uh, means they didn't get any points. They had a rough day. They didn't follow the instructions and didn't remain in their seat. They didn't attempt task, whatever your three to five expectations are, they would rate them on that. Uh, one means, and it's so, so we had to remind you or prompt you a couple of times throughout the morning or throughout the day. But other than that, you did it fairly well. And then a two means awesome. You blew it out of the water. It was excellent. It was a great day. Couldn't get any better. And so then that teacher would rate that student initially, return the card to them, and then they'd go throughout the day, throughout their classes. At the end of the day, they would check out with the same person, the same mentor they checked in with that morning to help them to make sense of their, their school card help them determine if they get a reward or if they need to do better tomorrow. And, you know, again, positive. Look at the positive parts. Look at the good parts of the day that they had and encourage that student to do better. If they get a reward, it should be something that is rewarding to that student. What is something that the student is willing to really try his best for? Uh, you know, what is it that is reinforcing to that student? What is it is that, that encourages that student to do well? Uh, so check in and check out, like I said, it's great for those students needing that adult attention. Some of the, uh, it also utilizes, uh, multiple components of a, uh, tier two strategies, uh, and tier one and, uh, you know, so, uh, PBI strategies, I guess you could say, like I said, the behavior momentum, we get them started off on the right foot. They're rolling along. They're doing really well. They're having a great morning. You just encourage them and keep uh, keep uh, encouraging them to continue on with that day, with that that momentum. Then you look at pre-correction. Okay, these are the things that we're going to be looking at. These are the goals. These are the things that we need to work on. Remember what it what hallway procedures look like. Remember what it looks like to sit in a class with your book open, taking notes, following instructions. Whatever those goals are, you pre-correct those or you remind them of the expectations and you let them know that this is what I'm looking for when you get a perfect day off these, you know, off, off following the rule, following the rules, following the expectations and uh, meeting the goal that you have set for that day. It's also a great way to progress monitor uh, student uh, behavioral goals, IEP goals. And it's also a very good way to determine by looking at that point card at the end of the day, which students, which teachers, 
staff members does the student do better with? Which staff members may the student be having a little struggle with or a little trouble with? What are some ways that we can intervene in those classes that the student struggles in to make it better for not only for the student, for, for the teacher as well? Uh, so we want to look at that, find that pattern. And uh, when you look at that and review that data, you can find patterns of behavior, where, when, what class period, things like that, to help you determine what are some better, more effective ways to uh, uh, help the student become successful. Next thing uh, that it uses is performance feedback. And we all often talk about positive, corrective feedback. Well, the mentor's not with the student all day long, but the mentor can look at the point card, look at the progress report, and determine, you know, talk about their performance. Oh, it looks like you had a rough time during social studies, or it looks like you struggled a little bit during uh, uh, language arts. What was going on? You know, well, did you have a test? Or was it somebody new? Could be been a sub in the classroom, something different, something changed. So you can look at that and determine, you know, provide them with that positive feedback on their performance for the day. And it also looks at positive reinforcement. Of course, we're going to encourage those students to do better and that verbal praise, uh, behavior specific praise, that enforce, reinforcement and encouragement that it could be a tangible reward. It could be things like that that the student's working for, but it's positive in how you're handling uh, the end of the day. In the morning, positive, upbeat, happy, excited, end of the day. Oh, thank you for being here. Uh, looks like you had a great day. I'm really proud of you. Look how well you did meeting your goals for the day. And then so then you send, again, it's one of those things where you send the the, the progress report or the, the school card, whatever you may want to call it. You send it home and let the parents review it, look at it, and maybe they can uh, talk to the their, their, their child about their day and how, how things went. And, you know, it, it, it don't really have that parent component like the behavior contract, but it still does, it still has that component where, uh, or the school home note, uh, it's still, but it still has that component where the parents know what kind of day the student had, knows kind of what's going on in the school and what's going on in the student's life and in their classroom and some of the behaviors that they have difficulty with. So some of the things that you will want to look at, look for is an assignment of an adult mentor who the student likes <laughs> or doesn't mind meeting with, unconditional positive praise and regard. Uh, the mentor wouldn't get involved in discipline with the student because if you do, then it's going to break that kind of that trust and that bond that they have with that mentor and that relationship. And once you damage that, it's very difficult to uh, build that relationship back, to repair that uh, relationship, to rebuild that trust. So just be aware that that person has to be a positive uh, person in that student's life. Uh, you have daily contact with the student in the morning and afternoon. Now, if I were first starting a check-in and check-out, you can modify it a little bit. I would modify it to where maybe the student checked in uh, halfway through the day or maybe check in, you know, after lunch or right before lunch, somewhere in the middle of the day, just to kind of make sure that they're on track and that they're still being motivated, they're still positive, they're still, you know, working hard and they understand what's going on and uh, uh, are still, you know, that way you can change those behaviors or hopefully redirect them to get them back on track. Another thing that you want would be uh, progress monitoring. Uh, like we said, it forms a basis of performance-based feedback and it's positive reinforcement for improved behavior, praise, behavior specific praise, public recognition, access to desired items or privileges or rewards. So check in and check out is a, like I said, really, really uh, useful and beneficial uh, tier two strategy for those students that need just that little extra encouragement from someone positive in their life and in the school setting as well. Thank you. I'm Doug Smith from Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative. 